I'm Ping, um, and I'm an engineer on Google's crisis response team. Our job is to get important information out in times of crisis. And today, I'm going to tell you about a tool that we've used very effectively to help us do that job. That tool is now open source, so you can use it too. As you know, when a crisis strikes, there are many important geographical data sets that can be vitally useful to survival, to recovery, uh, to the response effort. Uh, just to pick a few random examples of those data sets, uh, the National Weather Service, for example, puts out forecasts of hurricane tracks. They put out maps of floods. Uh, FEMA publishes maps of evacuation routes. Geomac publishes maps of wildfires, and so on. It takes tremendous human, organizational, and technical resources to put these data sets together. But these maps are only effective if you can get the right maps in front of the right people. Today, all of these maps are hosted on different websites. So not everybody knows where to find them. And that means that some of them don't get the audiences they deserve. Every website has its own map viewer. The map viewers all look a little different and work a little differently. Some work better than others. Um, and perhaps the biggest problem is that because the data is all separate, it's hard to see it in context. In disaster relief, we're always talking about coordination, right? So here we've got the Red Cross. They're publishing the status of their emergency shelters. But even if other relief organizations follow their lead and also publish their map operations, um, there wouldn't be an easy way for you to combine all of that into a common picture so you knew what everybody was doing. So we've got three problems. Relevant, high-quality maps are not always easy to find. The map viewers out there vary in quality. Some are awkward to use. Some are not accessible on smartphones, for example. And the data is isolated, so it's hard to see it in context. Now, if you're a map publisher, there are professional GIS tools out there for you. They will help you take your data set and turn it into a beautiful PDF or an image for your website. But what if what you want to do is take two data sets, two layers from different publishers who have never heard of each other? Now we're talking about a different role, the role of the map curator. A map curator knows where to find good data, understands the needs of the specific audience they're trying to reach, and may have local knowledge that they can bring to bear to make that map more valuable. So for example, suppose you're dealing with a hurricane, and you've got a map of evacuation zones from your local government. Suppose you could overlay that with a map of emergency shelters that I just talked about, and then overlay that with real-time traffic data so you could tell where the, the roads were congested. Or suppose you're dealing with a wildfire. You could take the wildfire map from Geomac, overlay it with weather forecasts from the Weather Channel, and give you some insight into what's going to happen with those wildfires. Maybe search for your home address on it to see whether it's going to affect you. When you select and synthesize the right information, you get insight. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we do uh, in Google Crisis Response. So this is the map that we published for uh, Hurricane Isaac. And we want it to be easy for anyone to make maps like this. We think there are lots more people out there that can play a really valuable role as map curators. And they shouldn't have to be JavaScript programmers or GIS experts in order to do this. So we built a tool to help us do this. Uh, in this tool, you can just click to create a map, click to paste in a URL to uh, any KML file out there on a the web, and it becomes a layer. Or a geo RSS feed, it becomes a layer. Um, you can incorporate a URL to a tile server to get a raster layer or fusion tables or Google Maps engine layers. We're trying to increase the number of layer types that we support all the time. To be clear, this tool does not host your data. So if you have tiles you want to serve, you need to find some other hosting service that will serve them for you. But on the flip side, if your map mashup points at some geo RSS feed out there, then as soon as someone else updates that feed, your map will also be updated. Because by incorporating all of the layers by reference, all those layers are dynamic. Your map is a live remix of your source data. Um, when you create your map, uh, you can share that map uh, with your colleagues and get it reviewed before you publish it. Um, you can designate a particular version of the map as the published version. So you can continue working on the map and making changes to it without affecting what the public sees. Um, and we want this map to be able to reach the broadest possible audience. So uh, we designed the map viewer so that it accommodates uh, and adapts to different screen sizes, um, rearranging and collapsing different parts of the UI as necessary. So you can see the map um, in a browser, uh, but also embedded in an iframe or on a tablet or on a smartphone. When users visit the map, uh, they can customize their view by turning layers on and off, uh, affecting the transparency of layers, um, searching for addresses, zooming in and out, and so on, setting their viewport. And then they can, collapse, they can get that in a URL. So they can share their customized view uh, over social media and then talk about it. We've just released this tool as an open source project called StratumApp on Google Code. 
Um, there's also a hosted version of the app that you can try out if you're interested. Please talk to me. There's all kinds of things we want to do to make this app better. Um, and we're really interested in your feedback. If part of what you do is to get maps in front of people, uh, we think you'll want to check it out. Thanks. <laughs>